everybody. Welcome back to another 1993 Honda Prelude SI video. Well, this week, I think I'm going to do a little steam cleaning of the interior fabrics. Stay tuned. Well, as I mentioned in my first video, I do actually have a full interior OEM interior for this car, but I uh, it's probably going to be a little while before I get that installed. So in the meantime, although this is not the uh, factory fabric, it is actually in excellent condition. But I'm going to steam clean it with my uh, extractor, so I'm sure it'll benefit. Uh, it's really hot out right now, so I'm trying to stay in the somewhat air-conditioned garage and do some work. In the last video, I finished the stereo and power, in and power antenna install, so today I think I'm gonna do the seats. So let's get set up. All right, I'm uh, set up with my Kenmore extractor. I really like this one. Uh, most people use a Bissell, but I have one of those, but it uh, stopped working, so got this Kenmore. So I don't expect these to be too dirty, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them a once-over and we'll move on from there. All right, there's not really much to see, so I'll go ahead and get these seats knocked out. Well, the two front seats are done. That was very uneventful. They were not even dirty, but at least I know they're fresh. So they're a little bit damp. They will dry very quickly. I'm not even gonna do the backs because I doubt anyone's ever sat back there. And like I said, I do have the OEM interior for this, but I need to drop off uh, the driver's seat that I have and have the bolstery stuff. So that'll be coming in the uh, next several weeks or so. All right, let's see what else we can clean. All right, I stand corrected. The two front seats were a little dirty, so I'm glad I did that. While this interior is drying, I just got a delivery from Amazon, and this is what I ordered. Uh, if I can get it to focus seatbelt stopper button. Uh, this goes on the seatbelt itself. And there used to be one here, but it fell off and it keeps this up where you can reach it. And you can kind of see a ghost of where it used to be. Um, yeah, right there. So that's where I'm gonna put this one. And it comes with these little caps, one for each side. You need to poke a hole in the seatbelt and then snap that on. I've seen mixed reviews of these, but I'll give it a shot. The one on the other side is still there, so I'll just need this side. Or it came with this little uh, tool right here, quite sharp. And the hole was already there from the factory one, so easily just went through. Anyway, I'm gonna try to put this on. Um, probably have to squeeze them together and hopefully it'll stay. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought. The thing to remember, of course, is to make sure you have this part of the buckle above this before you put this in you know otherwise you'll have to take it off and try it one more time anyway that uh, accomplishes that i have no idea how long that'll actually stay on but the pack came with about i don't know six or eight different ones i might even maybe put some glue there or something just to keep it but for now one more job done all right, I removed the battery and the battery holder, battery housing. Uh, it's pretty dirty, so I'm definitely gonna clean it. And as far as my cars like this, I like to peel all the stickers off the battery. It's just a much cleaner look, so I'll do that before I put this together. A little bit of corrosion under there, it's hidden, but I will probably slap some paint on it before I put it back together. 
Oh, and Tyson, I just wanted to add this. <laughs> Look what I found hidden underneath the airbox, stuffed under there. The original decal that you had remade. Not bad. I'll definitely hold on to this. Well, this battery tray, I scrubbed it twice. It did not clean up as nicely as I wanted it to. So I'm gonna give it a coat of some trim black. The whole thing, I know you won't be able to see most of it, but it'll, it'll be, uh, I'll know it's there. Back here at the car, while I wait for that plastic trim to dry, I did uh, scrape that surface rust and I shot it with some uh, rusty metal primer. So I'm not going to waste, I, I do have some of this body color, but I'm not going to waste it on that because I have other things planned with it and it's pretty expensive, um, but you're never going to see this and uh, it's hopefully won't rust anymore. Now, as another phase of this, I'm not going to do it tonight because I'm running out of time, but I am going to remove the entire air intake and probably paint it and uh, clean it for sure, clean underneath it. And little by little, we will get this uh, in as close to show condition as possible. I'm gonna do things like repaint this shield and, you know, um, clean the firewall really good. Little by little, it takes time. So I'll let this dry and I'm gonna put it back together. Just one more quick little clip before I put everything back together. I did uh, obviously refinish this hardware. Uh, it was kind of rusty and dirty. And I refinished it um, cast engine paint <laughs> in the color of cast engine. <laughs> so, uh, oh, actually, here it is over here. This Rust Oleum engine enamel in the color of, sorry, cast coat aluminum. And it does seem to match pretty well. And just like that, the battery project is all done. Um, I don't know if these uh, battery hold downs are factory or not, but I don't like how much they stick up. So I will probably end up cutting those down just to look a little more professional. And uh, th this is pretty tight in here between the, you know, the radiator fan and the air box. There's not a lot of room. And I think the main problem being this plastic shield was never designed to, you know, for a battery to have this kind of lip on it. So it bulges out just a little bit around there, but you know, nothing we can't handle. I'm not gonna cut that at this point. I'm just gonna leave it, but I probably will get out the Dremel one of these days and buzz those down. So on to the next project. All right, I decided, and it's about uh, 647, so. I have probably less than an hour worth of daylight left, but I decided I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this apart and I'm gonna clean this and I'm gonna repaint this. And in doing so, I'm gonna have to remove this decal, but you may have noticed in an earlier segment that I did find the original one. And uh, plus when Tyson sold me the car, uh, it came with a few extra of these. So this really needs to be refinished. So that's what we're going to do. Clean this up and uh, I will also remove that intake tube and then uh, give me a chance to clean behind that. So let's get started. Okay, over here in my dedicated paint booth, I do have this cleaned. And for you, Devin, I did use plenty of degreaser. So we're going to go ahead and give it a coat of my favorite SEM trim black. Now, I don't know how this is gonna hold up under hood, but we'll find out. Uh, obviously, pretty simple to remove, so here's the before. Yep. 
So the air box is all done, put back together. Looks great. Uh, it was all stained before. I couldn't get all those, you know, stains and scuffs off. I am gonna take the tube off, but that's gonna be a whole project and it's already, it's gonna be dark in about, you know, 30 minutes. So I wanna take my time and clean this and probably refinish it like I did with the CRX. But for now, the only, only other thing I have to do is put on the decal, which I will do in an upcoming clip. Stay tuned. So here is that original decal that I found behind it. I was able to uh, clean it pretty much all the way up. It had like rust stains or something on it. Uh, part of the back, the white backing is pulled off. So I actually put a piece of white paper back there. And I did pick up some of this very, very, very thin uh, two inch adhesive on Amazon. And I'm going to basically just put it on here. And this is a release paper, this, this tannish yellow thing you see. And once that's on, I will cut it to size and we'll stick it back on the car. All right, well, the uh, new old sticker is on here and that adhesive uh, seems to be very, very sticky. So we will see how long it stays on here, hopefully indefinitely, but it's really, really down there and it is the original to the car. So it fits well and I know that it's correct. Um, that tape is pretty slick. The release paper just peels right off the back and uh, didn't give me any trouble. So on to the next project. So it's the next day and I've got plenty of time. So I removed the intake tube, it was pretty simple. So I'm gonna give this thing a nice clean. I may end up painting it, uh, I'm not sure yet. It's pretty dirty. I know most people would not care about the cleanliness of, you know, such parts. And especially considering the fact that it's half buried and you don't really see it, but that's what I enjoy doing. So a couple minutes to take it off, a couple minutes to clean it, and I'll enjoy the result. Let that soak for a minute. And no, as Devin would say, no, oh yeah, about that video would be complete without busting out the toothbrush. So that's what we'll do. All right, after about an hour's worth of work, this intake tube is all done. I decided not to paint it. I actually cleaned it about four times with a toothbrush. Uh, it was just oxidized, had a lot of grease and dirt on it. What I ended up doing was coating it in ceramic uh, coating and um, that's what I did to the CRX and it's held up wonderfully over the last year or so with the engine heat and it just gives it a nice factory appearance so I think that's about enough cleaning for one video that'll do it for this week until next time we'll catch you on the flip side